Alright, so now we're going to start with chapter 3, so which is known as the exponential and logarithmic functions. In this video, we're going to start with the two first subtopic, which is going to be 3.1 and also 3.2. So what is the difference between exponential function and the exponential functions? They are basically the same things. Exponential functions referring to the case that you have, for example, 3 to the power of x or 2 to the power of x and so on. So the exponential functions actually refers to the case that when you have your base is uh, the constant e. And we know what is e, e actually just a constant value. It's actually a value of 2.71828 if I'm not mistaken. And there are like other constant at the back. Okay, so basically e, it is just a number. Okay, the number is 2.71828 and followed by some other numbers, which is going to be super lengthy. And we simplify that as being e. So it's a number. It's a constant value. So let me put over here. So e is a constant. So which is similar as 3 and also 2. But um, this is like more known as an exponential function and called as being the exponential function. Okay, so that is why I'm going to combine 3.1 and 3.2 because the idea uh, behind those two are basically going to be exactly the same. So an exponential function is actually a function in the form of a to the power of x. So if I have, for example, a 2 to the power of x, so this 2 over here, so this is called as being the base. And this x over here is known as, we can call that as exponent, we can call that as index, and we call that as power as well. But mainly, so, uh, so usually it is called by being the power. Okay, and as I mentioned to you before, so the most popular one is going to be when you have base e, for example, exponential to the power of x. For this case, what happened is that your base is going to be e and the power is going to be x. So where a is a positive constant. So the base, so it's always a positive value. So these are going to be the exponential properties. So what happened is that when you have... Um, the same base, there are multiple uh, mathematical operations that you can conduct on your function. So if you have a to the power of m multiplied by a to the power of n, all you have to do is add up the power. Remember, product to the power you add them up. And when you have a to the power of m over a to the power of n, when division is involved, so you minus the power with the condition that the base is the same. Remember, you can only do this operation when the base is the same. And when you have a bracket like this that you have to expand, you basically multiply both of this. So m multiplied by n, so it's going to be mn. So remember, the bracket means product. You multiply the constant m and also n. Okay, and this over here, so this, uh, when you expand a, b to the power of n, so you expand them individually, a to the power of n, b to the power of n. And the same goes for division. If you have a over b to the power of n, so it's going to be a to the power of n over b to the power of n. And if I have a to the power of negative n, so it's actually 1 over a to the power of n. For example, let's say if I write my uh, constant, I have a 2. So 2 to the power of negative 3, this is actually equivalent to 1 over when I put it underneath. So now the power is going to be a positive value. Instead of negative value, now it become a positive value. And uh, if you have the power in terms of this fraction, a to the power of 1 over n, so what goes underneath is actually a root uh, raised, to, raised to the power of n. And when you have in this form right here, so what goes on top, so this is going to be the power. So what goes underneath, that is going to be the root for this case. For example, let's say if I have something like this, I have, um, so I like come across 9. So I'm going to have 9 to the power of 3 over 2. So this means that I'm going to have square root of 2. Okay, remember what goes underneath. So the, what goes underneath for this case is going to be 2, the number at the bottom. So that's why I have the square root over there. And the number at the top is 3, so therefore it's going to be raised to the power of 3. And if I were to simplify this, I will get 3 to the power of 3, so that is going to be 27. Remember, at the top 
is going to be the power. So underneath is going to be the root of the constant itself. Okay, so I'm going to show the example by starting um, evaluating the, the following functions here. I have e until e. And again, I know that you have come across this before. So if there is no need for you to listen to this, please keep the video and you can proceed to the exercise. So I've given, I prepared for you exercise here with the solution as well. So proceed to the exercise right away. But if you need to refresh, then continue, please continue listening um, to this video. So I'm going to start with A. So here, um, let me put over here first. I'm going to start with question number one. So A, I'm going to evaluate 2 to the power of 5 multiplied by 2 to the power of negative 7. So here what happened is that the operation involved is going to be multiplication. And as long as the base is the same, so we can start doing the operation straight away. So here I can write that this is going to equal 2 to the power of 5. And we know that one it is multiplied so it's going to be plus of the power so i'm going to have five plus negative of seven so this is going to be two to the power of negative two and according to what we have seen before so if i have power of negative i can write this as one over so now the power is going to be positive two to the power of two instead of two to the power of negative two and this is going to be a quarter one over four so that will be the outcome Okay, so when you see evaluate or simplify, you're going to try to simplify your uh, exponential and make it into the simplest form. So that will be for A. And for B, so we have negative 2 to the power of 12. So divide by negative 2 to the power of 10. So again, it will be the same idea. But for this case, the operation involved is going to be division. So as long as the base is the same, then we can proceed right away. So for this case, I'm going to have negative 2. So for the first term, the power is 12. And because of the division, so it's going to be minus. And the second power is 10. So I'm going to have negative 2 to the power of 2. So negative 2 to the power of 2, this is going to equal 4. So that is going to be for the case of B. And I'm going to proceed to C. For C, I have uh, 4x cubed y squared. So all I have to do is I have to expand the bracket. So what we have to do is we are going to expand this individually. So I'm going to have 4. First, I'm going to start with the first term, which is 4. So I'm going to have 4 to the power of 2. And what happened to x is that there's a bracket over here. So remember, I told you just now, I mentioned the fact that when we have a bracket, so that means product. So this is actually a product. So when I have x to the power of 3 raised to the power of 2, so that is going to be, so let me use a different color of this to indicate this is the solution. So therefore, this is going to be 4 to the power of 2. x is going to be power of 6 and y is going to be power of 2. And of course, I can also evaluate if I don't want to live it in terms of 4 to the power of 2. I can write that this is going to equal 16x to the power of 6, y to the power of 2. So that will be for C. And then I'm going to proceed to D, for example, D. So I have 1 over 3 to the power of negative 2. 1 over 3 to the power of negative 2. So this will be the same idea as I have mentioned to you in uh, number 1. So here, I have a negative power, and if I were to bring it up, it is going to be a positive power. So this is going to be 3 to the power of 2. So if I were to bring it up, when we bring it up, what happens is that the positive and negative change in terms of the power. For example, so let's say if I have 1 over a to the power of 2. So when I bring it up, so the positive power is going to be a to the power of negative 2. Or if I were to have 1 over a to the power of negative 6, when I bring this up, what happened is that the negative power is now going to be positive. So it's going to be a to the power of 6. So that is what happened. So it's going to be the opposite when you bring it up. So for this case, what happened is that I'm going to have 3 to the power of 2 and 3 to the power of 2, that is simply going to be 9. So that is for D. So now I'm going to proceed to the last one, E. So I have 8 to the power of negative 2 over 3. As I mentioned to you previously, what happens is that 
at the top is going to be the power so at the bottom is going to be the root first of all i'm going to make it positive because i wanted to get rid of it we have a negative right there so i have to bring it down make it in terms of a fraction i'm going to write this as 1 over 8 to the power of 2 over 3 now i'm going to change the form i'm going to write this as uh, 1 over First, I'm going, to dealing, uh, I'm going to deal with the root. So I'm going to have 8. So this is going to be cube root of 3. So that will be uh, the one underneath. It will become the cube root. And then I'm going to deal with the power on top, which is 2. And now it's going to be the whole thing. So raised to the power of 2. I'm going to raise the whole thing to the power of 2. Okay. And now let's start simplifying this. So I'm going to get 1 over. So cube root of, through, uh, of 8. We know that that is going to equal 2, so I'll end up with 1 over 2 to the power of 2. So this is going to be 1 over 4. So that will be the outcome. So basically, 8 to the power of negative 2 over 3. So that is equivalent to 1 over 4. Okay, so for question number three, so number three, uh, I make it slightly different. So we're still dealing with the same things, just operation involving index. But the thing is that for question number three, I started changing the constant instead of like having the same base. So I decide that what happened if we have different base, so how, different bases. So how do we actually deal with this kind of problem? So let's start with question number two. So for a, what do I have? I have 3 to the power of n plus 2. And that is multiplied by 9 to the n. So divide by 27, also raised to the power of n. So now let's start with the calculation. So first of all, as I mentioned just now, before we do the operation, the first thing that you have to notice the fact that the base is, that all the bases are different. I have 3, 9, and 27. So when I want to start to do the operation, I have to first make sure that the bases are the same. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to find the similarity between all these numbers. So the similarity will be 3, because I know that 9 is going to be 3 to the power of 2, and 27 is actually 3 to the power of 3. So basically, I can change all of them into base 3. So here, I'm going to write that this is going to equal 3 to the power of n plus 2. So multiply by 9 is going to be 3 to the power of 2 raised to the n. And divide by 27 is 3 to the 3. So raised also to the power of n. Okay, now I'm going to expand the bracket. So I'm going to have 3 to the power of n plus 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 2n so divide by 3 to the power of 3n okay so now based on whether it's going to be division or multiplication so when it's multiplications i'm going to add the power so if it's division i'm going to minus the power so therefore we'll end up with 3 to the power of n plus 2 so plus 2n minus 3n i'm going to simplify this I noticed that the fact that n plus 2n minus 3n, that is going to be 0. So we'll end up with 3 to the power of 2, and 3 to the power of 2 is simply going to be 9. So for a, I simplified those, and it becomes 9. So now let's start dealing with b. So what do I have for b? I have p to the power of negative 2. So q to the power of negative 3, and that will be over nine p q to the five. Nine p q to the five, and this is going to be to the power of negative four. Okay. So first of all, what we're going to do is we are going to get rid of the bracket. So how do we get rid of the bracket? So each of the term is now going to be raised to the power of negative 4. All I have to do is multiply. So I'm going to start with the top first. So when I start with the top, I'm going to have P. So negative 2 
multiply it by negative 4, so that is going to be a positive of 8. And for the case of Q, I have negative 3 multiplied by negative 4, so that is going to be positive of 12. And we're going to do the same underneath. So I'm going to have 9 to the power of negative 4. So let's simply write it as 9 to the power of negative 4. And then I'm going to have P. And now P is to the power of 1 multiplied by negative 4. It's going to be negative 4. And the same goes for Q. Uh, 5 multiplied by negative 4 is going to be negative 20. So when I expand the bracket, remember, you don't only simply do it at the top but neglect the bottom. You do it for every single term in the bracket. Every single term, term uh, top and also bottom has to be raised to the power of negative 4. Okay, so now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start dealing with the common terms, uh, with terms with the same base. So yeah, I have p to the power of 8 at the top. Now it's p to the power of negative 4 at the bottom. Here I have q to the power of 12 and the denominator I have q to the power of negative 20. So we know that what operation is involved. The operation involved is going to be division. Or I can also write it like this. I can write that this is going to equal uh, 1 over 9 to the power of 94. So multiplied by p to the power of 8 over p to the power of 94. So multiplied by q to the power of 12 over q to the power of negative 20. So that's actually the same thing. And when I multiply back all these three terms, this one, this one, and this one. So it's going to combine and become as the original function at the top. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to start doing the operation. I'm going to start simplifying this. So this, when I bring it to the top, it's going to become 9 to the power of 4 instead of 1 over 9 to the power of 94. And on this side for p, I'm going to have p to the power of 8 because its division is going to be minus negative of 4. And for q, I'm going to have 12 also minus negative of 20. And when I simplify, I actually don't need to do the other page. So 9 to the power of 4, you can use your calculator for this. So basically 9 to the power of 4 is going to be 6561. And my p, I have 8 plus 4, that is going to be positive of 12. And Q is going to be 12 minus 20. It's going to be positive of 32. Okay, so that will be uh, the outcome of that. Right? So first you expand the bracket and start, you start doing operation on the same base and then you simplify.